This is the Headless Professor talking about paradoxes. A paradoxical claim is one that meets two criteria. First, it must be reflexive, and secondly, it must be contradictory. If a claim fails to meet both of these two criteria, it cannot be termed a paradox. Let's begin by defining what we mean by a reflexive claim. A reflexive claim is self-referential. It comments about its own truth. A reflexive claim pertains to itself as a claim and says that it is true or says that it is untrue. Let's look at some examples of reflexive claims. Imagine that we read in some scripture, accept what this book says. Now that scripture could be the Christian Bible, the Jewish Torah, the Hindu Vedas, or the Islamic Quran. Most scriptures make the contention that what they say is true or of spiritual value. Such a claim is reflexive. The scripture is making a claim about itself that is self-referential, reflexive. But is that paradoxical? Not at all, because it is not contradictory, it is self-affirming. Consider the following Supreme Court ruling. The Supreme Court rules that the Supreme Court may rule in such cases. There actually was such a case known as Marbury versus Madison when the Supreme Court first declared that it had the power to intervene and pass judicial review on acts of Congress. Such a claim made by the court is self-referential because it passes judgment on claims made by the court. It is reflexive. Is it paradoxical? Not at all. It is not self-contradictory. It is self-affirming. Imagine this sign on the wall. Ignore all posted signs. Is this claim self-referential? Yes, because it is a sign on the wall and it makes a claim or issues a command about signs on the wall. Ignore all signs on the wall. Is this claim paradoxical? Yes, because it is self-contradictory. It instructs us to ignore all signs on the wall, yet it itself is a sign on the wall. And if we ignore that sign, then we cannot do what it says to do. We cannot ignore signs on the wall. Not every statement which is contradictory in some way or other qualifies as a paradox because most contradictory claims are not reflexive. There are many cases of metaphors which use something known as an oxymoron. Brilliant night, razor dullness. While well, these metaphorical claims lack the kind of cognitive pretension that a real paradox would require. So they may be contradictory in one sense, but they're not real paradoxes. Then there are examples that involve instructions or statements that are somewhat impossible. For example, I'll start after I finish. Well, that's chronologically impossible. But the statement is not itself reflexive. It doesn't comment about its own truth directly, and therefore it is not a paradox. Another kind of statement that involves a certain kind of inconsistency would be hypocrisy. And that would be a situation where actions and words do not match.
consider the following act by Congress. Congress passes a law saying that killers will be killed, perhaps in the form of murderers being executed. Some of the opponents of capital punishment regard such laws as inconsistent or hypocritical. Well, they are not paradoxical because the law passed by Congress makes no claim about whether or not Congress can pass such a law. It may be hypocritical, but it is clearly not paradoxical. Now here are three statements. One of these statements is a paradox. Let's see if we can identify which one it is. He always lies. Maybe that's true. Maybe it isn't. That sounds like a synthetic statement. We'd have to look at this person's statements and see if they are all lies. The statement is clearly not self-referential. It does not pertain to himself. It pertains to someone else, and therefore it is not a paradox. I always lie. That is a reflexive statement, because if I always lie, I am lying as I say this. And is it self-contradictory? If I'm lying when I say this, then you cannot accept the truth of what I'm saying, and therefore maybe I don't always lie. That statement is paradoxical. Look at the last statement. I only lied then. I don't know if that's true. We'd have to take a look at what was said and what the situation really was, but the statement is clearly not reflexive and therefore not a paradox. So of these three different statements, only the middle one is a paradox, both reflexive and self-contradictory.